The Radcliffe Tsunami. What a great name. Radcliffe Watches. British company designed in Oxford. They've kindly sent me on loan this, the Radcliffe Tsunami. It's going to be on Kickstarter in a little while, so do bear with me. This is a prototype, but it's a very good one. It's going to give you all the details you need to know. And I just wanted to share with you because I've seen pictures of it and I just thought the design is gorgeous. This is what we're going to cover. And I think it's going to be a really good price point for many of you to afford. If you're in the market for a really good micro brand, it's got an awesome set of specifications. You're in the right place. Hope you enjoy this review. So before we get stuck in me discussing this watch with you and all the bits and bobs I've liked and disliked and things you should be aware of, you're going to need to know the stats and specs. So here they are. So what drew me to want to see a Radcliffe watch? Well, it's a micro brand I hadn't actually heard of before. And I was pleased I did in then because I went on their website. I thought, let's do some research before I chat about this watch and see what other watches they've released already. And they've done a gorgeous range of chronograph sports watches. And the thing that really, I think, which makes these watches a bit more radical compared to other watches in the same sort of marketplace, I have to say is the colors. It is just the vibrancy and that is what pops. And that's why their new addition to their range, which is going to come later this year, is going to be their first dive watch. It's going to be something that is just going to have these little unique selling points at a great price. And that is what I just think is music to my ears. I don't know about you, because I like a bargain, as many of you know. I like something that's interesting, that's uh, got a bit of something to it sometimes. Not always, you know, I like a field watch. <laughs> and they're notoriously bland, but that's besides the point. When it comes to dive watches, I do like something a little bit more interesting now and then. Uh, that's where these come in. So if you've seen on their website, the kind of things that this Oxford designed British company can come up with, I think there's exciting things to come. You've seen the stats and specs. You know, there's going to be some changes to the prototype. Uh, this obviously is a prototype. There's only three of these and the changes I've listed already. So I don't have to repeat myself over that. But what I need to discuss is the reason why I was drawn to this watch and the reason why I think you are going to be in for a treat when the production one comes is the price. It's going to start off early bird between 180 and 200 and what I understand on Kickstarter. You're going to get not just this gorgeous bracelet, which has got a quick release, which is awesome for quick release changes to make life easier. It comes with a silicone strap. This is just a black generic one, which is sort of the sample that it's going to be coming with. But the changes will be, it's going to be the same strap as this, but it's going to be really vibrant colors. So if you've got the gray and the blue detail one, you're going to have a baby blue strap. You've got the yellow, you guessed it, yellow strap, and so on and so forth. So that is what helps it pop as well. And I just think it's fun to have some bright colors because it's so easy to have bland watches. And that's where this steps in. And the things which are being changed, which I initially am not 100% on, are the fact it doesn't have female end links, but that's changing, happy days, helps reduce that lug to lug to the actual lug to lug of 49. So while we're here talking about slight criticisms, I think if you're gonna have quick release everything all the time, I don't know if you need the drilled lugs, but it's not gonna hurt by having it, to be honest with you. Uh, it's a very flat design of watch. I think it would have been nice to have a little bit more curving on the lugs, tapering down, but I've worn this watch a lot to get as much time in with this watch for review and it doesn't sit unpleasantly on the wrist even with the male end links it conforms really nicely I have a seven inch wrist so you get an idea of I have a medium wrist so quite a big dive watch but it feels so comfortable and the weight distribution is spot on helped by this really nice chunky engineer bracelet which I do like and I think that's I'm glad that's staying but they are changing this clasp I haven't shown you much of that because that's totally changing this has no micro adjust 
Really well made, by the way, as even as a sample goes and a prototype, it is spot on. No problems with it. But he's looking to ditch that enormous dive extension because I don't think it's necessary, really. Because if you're going to go diving a lot, uh, you could probably stick it on your rubber strap that it comes with. So, and then you've got micro adjust. So if you need to adjust it, that's nice and easy. We'll still have screw links. These are all really positive, practical applications that you've got on this watch. But what I'm talking about with regards to the design, the little details, which I think are really clever. I like the sandwich dial. Uh, it's enabling it to have the loom aspects really loaded with that BGW9. You've got loaded it in the currently PVD. I said that before, steel bezel insert, but that will be ceramic. So it will change the look a little bit, but not dramatically. Love the little bit of color in here to show you up to the 15 minute mark. Again, it's maybe not quite the right shade of blue to match the blue in the dial area. Uh, it's just these little details, which I, I really am drawn to. And this gray and the blue work really well together, but the only slight negative, not enough to be a deal breaker is they are very similar in tone and they, they can look a little bit washed out, but there's still enough contrast with you've got the black on the date wheel, the seconds hand and the logo, but with the tip of the seconds hand being blue, it kind of gets lost in there with that blue minute chapter ring out there. So it's, it's as lovely as that second hand is. I think it maybe you could have had a black tip. I don't know. Just these are little tweaks I'm just suggesting just to be really picky. But it's the design that I like. It's so legible. The amount of loom in these hands, nice broad hands, which are the right length, really enables this to be extremely legible. And then you've got the all the usual delightful features that you'd want in a watch nowadays for two to three hundred pounds would be the fact it's got all the right materials. Like I said before, it's got sapphire with loads of AR coating, but it's not too garish. I mean, you can see it only just about sort of there you go. You can just see it. It's not really obvious. And that's good because it could have been garish, but it's not. Even as a prototype, the rotating bezels absolutely spot on. But there's talk. He's looking to do something really clever. Don't know if it's possible yet. But to have these bezels so you can re replace and remove it for different colors and it's a way of personalizing the watch but the downside which they're trying to work on is it may affect the bezel feel something that's not meant to come off can be engineered in a way that has a lovely feel and action but something that may be easy to come off you may lose that so it's something that is pros and cons being weighed up at the moment but that that will come but i think that's a really clever interesting concept which i'll be excited to see if it actually gets pulled off now what is going to change slightly is this crown it's not got rounded edges either side so it makes it a little bit harder to to get a really decent grip on it's kind of got a sharper edge there it's not really bad and they're changing the sort of the knurling effect on here because even though it's got a bit of groove action going on here it's not actually super grippy bezel's grippy enough he was a bit worried about that but that's, that's totally fine so the difference between the prototype that you're seeing here and the final version is not going to be dramatic the fit and finish will be even better even as a prototype this is really good neat brushing and look at that case back that is the, for me another showpiece that even though it is looks perfect to me that's going to be refined even more and that for me is a showstopper if you want to just take the watch off and admire it with pride that is a lovely feature. So the two highlights I would say in summary of this watch for its design is the unique colors, how they work together, some pastels and things that you don't normally see on a watch. It's nice to have that vibrancy and to have a really beautifully designed and manufactured case back. These are two massive USPs. But the fact it's got a high beat movement and 300 meters water resist aided with helium escape valve. It's a great spec. It blows my mind. That these can be made so um, so well and with with unique design as well. This isn't doesn't feel like it's homaging. What do you guys think? This is just a sort of preliminary, preliminary look. A new micro brand's a new release. And it's so nice to share this early edition prototype with you guys. Get your feedback. I think it's a stunner, but what do you think? Comments are so welcome. The uh, Radcliffe Watchers would love to know what you think. Uh, not just me. My opinion isn't everything, of course. This is going to be shared with another watch reviewer after this. I've just been lent this watch. And I actually will be sad to see it go because I've thoroughly enjoyed it. If you've thoroughly enjoyed this review, please give a thumbs up. And uh, subscribe if you haven't. Been a pleasure. See you in the next one. Bye for now.